my loves. Welcome back to the Balance Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger, and I am so happy that you're here. On this podcast, we go deep with guests from all different areas, all different industries, topics, backgrounds, and today is no exception. Today, we have the beautiful Beth Bears on the podcast, and I'm so excited about everything that we talked about in this episode. Beth is one of the first actresses that I've had on the Balance Blonde podcast, and she is a very successful actress. So let's just start by talking about that. She is known as one of the two leads in Two Broke Girls. She's the blonde. She jokes that everybody always says either the blonde or the brunette. And also for CBS's The Neighborhood that has been out since 2018. And I love both of those shows so much. So Beth and I connected because she is into all the health and wellness stuff. She's into manifestation. We have a lot of mutual friends. She's into the medical medium lifestyle, the healing lifestyle. We have so much in common. We talk all about anxiety and things that she's helped her to deal with her anxiety. We talk a lot about Hollywood, which is so interesting to me because I don't think a lot of you guys know this, but before I became a writer and a blogger, I was always into acting and I went to college or originally for theater before I changed my major and I always saw myself getting into acting. So the fact that Beth is such a part of Hollywood and also she talks about not always feeling at home in Hollywood or accepted among the Hollywood crowd is just a really interesting topic that we get to dive into here. I love everything she shares about animal therapy. She's very into horses. She is an activist. She has her own podcast called The Harmonics Podcast. And you guys have got to check her out on Instagram. She has over a million people following along and she's just phenomenal. We connected on so many things. And I'm so happy to have her as a friend and a soul sister. We just hit it off in a deep way. I think we talked for hours before we started recording this episode, which is always the best because we got to know each other really deeply and then we got to share. So I'm very excited to dive into this episode with Beth and have you guys listen. If you feel inspired to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, please do so. And then send me a screenshot to Jordan at thebalancebond.com so I can send you a free gift as a thank you. And before we dive into today's episode, I would love to thank our sponsor for today's show, Olipop. So I am obsessed with this healthy alternative to soda right now. It tastes so good. I'm loving it. Jonathan is loving it. We had our fridge stocked with Olipop and then we kept having friends over. People kept cracking them open and enjoying them. So now we've just been buying them at Erewhon and we are so obsessed. We're also buying them online because I do have a special code for everybody who buys online. So our exclusive deal for the Balance Bond podcast listeners to receive 20% off plus free shipping on the best-selling variety pack with Olipop is to go to drinkolipop.com slash blonde or use the code blonde at checkout. That is drinkolipop.com slash blonde. And this code is only valid for their variety pack. In the variety pack, you can find vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, and strawberry vanilla. My favorite right now is the classic root beer. It reminds me of going to this little ice cream shop in Sacramento called Vicks when I was a kid and getting a root beer soda, which I would get with root beer and chocolate ice cream because I'm a chocolate girl. So now you can have the classic root beer from Olipop, which is super low in sugar. It's healthy. It has healthy prebiotics for the gut. And then I would have it with some sugar-free vegan ice cream. And that is like the most delicious dessert and just treat ever. So I know a lot of people listening suffer from digestive issues, gut issues. We know I've had my fair share of gut issues. And what I love about Olipop is that not only are you drinking a super low sugar, super healthy version of soda, it's a soda alternative, but you are also taking care of your gut. So if you take probiotic supplements or eat fiber-rich foods, then you will love that Olipop supports a healthy gut microbiome thanks to the prebiotics, the botanical extracts, and the nine grams of plant fiber in each can. And prebiotics are basically food for your probiotics, aka the good bacteria in your gut. 
They are so incredible. And I know that a lot of people listening suffer from gut issues. So I think that you guys will love that. So if you try them, tell me what your favorite flavor is. Like I said, I love the root beer. Jonathan loves the orange squeeze and the cherry vanilla. And they're super low sugar. They're fully TBB approved. They're non-GMO, vegan, paleo, keto friendly, and have less than eight grams of carbs per can. So to redeem the special TBB offer to receive receive 20% off plus free shipping, Head to drinkolipop.com slash blonde or use the code blonde at checkout to claim this deal. That is D-R-I-N-K-O-L-I-P-O-P.com slash blonde and you will get 20% off plus free shipping. If you live in LA, you can get them at Erewhon and then they can be found in 3,000 stores across the country. So enjoy. Thank you, Olipop. Now let's head into this episode with Beth. So I am so excited that you're here. We've been chatting online for a while and just have so many mutual friends and so many mutual lifestyle choices. Uh, and I've been a fan things. of yours since, I think I'm one of your first fans though. Really? I've been a fan of yours since Lacey Phillips was on your show, which was years ago, yeah, I think. 2016, now. 2016. So. Yes. So, and we're in the same, yeah, we have a lot of mutual. We do. Mutual friends and we love- very mutual health. Um Yes. Paths. <laughs> we do. Well, we love Lacey, our oh, beautiful I love manifestation her so goddess. Much. And you know, yeah. I've manifested like my job on the neighborhood doing her work, my house. Like if I showed you what I wrote down for like my house, the exact the it, it I mean guys, like I know Jordan's probably talking about, it, but it works. It works. <laughs> it really right? works. So and tell us amazing. what you manifested about the house that came true. Um everything from like the exact look like I literally wanted this sort of very East Coast traditional look down to the floors, down to the feeling in the house. Like I got completely minimal. One of my goals was like manifestation goals was to really Marie Kondo and get full condoed. Um, And then the location, the way the front and backyard look like everything was that is in my incredible. So when you first saw that house, you must've been like, this is my house. Yeah, it was an immediate, and I had been looking for three years. Oh my gosh. And I didn't start, man, like I didn't put it on my list until it was only six months of manifesting before it actually came in. That's so so incredible. Yeah. And then you manifested your job on the neighborhood. The neighborhood was like the craziest thing I had, like the year after Two Broken, it, I got married and I was doing Lacey's work because I wasn't working full time. Like I had been on Two Broke Girls. I was doing Lacey's work like every day almost. And um, the neighborhood literally was everything I was looking for in a job down to like, there was this actor named Marcel Spears who's on our show who I'd seen in a play at the Geffen Playhouse who was like incredible. And I literally was like, I want the feeling of what like that guy brings to the art. Like, and then like cut to, I'm like on a television show working with him every day and Max Greenfield. Yeah, there was just so much um, that I- Of course, I, because- Manifest stuff is that. so real. It is. Manifesting really, really works. <laughs> Thank goodness for it. I know. Yeah. So tell us about you. So people probably know you from Two Broke Girls, yes. from the neighborhood, yes. from your podcast, yes. all the things. <laughs> tell us, let's go all the way back to okay. where did you grow up and yes. what was your childhood like? I grew up, um, we moved a lot. I was born in Pennsylvania and then I lived in Lynchburg, Virginia from like most of my like elementary into to the beginning of high school. So I say I'm from Virginia just because that's what felt like home. And then when I was 15, I moved to Marin County in Northern California. So I went from like the South to like the most hippy dippy, San, you know, right outside yeah. of San Francisco, anti-Iraq war protest. It was awesome. Where did you go to high school? Tam High, in okay. Mill Valley. I'm from Sacramento and I know <gasps> yeah. like so many people from Marin. So I had to ask. That's so crazy. Yeah. I went to Tam. I Love. probably, we probably have some friends For in sure. common in For that sure. too. Sacramento, my best friend's from Rockland. Do you know where that area yeah, is? Yeah, I know where Rockland is. Yeah. Where did she or he go to high school? Do you know? I don't know where she went. We'll have to find I'll out. I'll find out, Courtney. Yeah. I'll find out. She listens to your podcast, so. Oh, cool. Hi, we'll Courtney. Hi, Court. And yeah, I, you know, moving a lot, the theater and acting was sort of how I made my 
friends, my social life, everything. It was my heart and soul. I wanted to be an actress since I was like three or four years old. So that really helped moving a lot. Wow. Talk about manifesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the people out there who who want that dream career and, and this is what you're doing. I'm very grateful and very lucky. Yeah. And then I moved here in 20, 2020, no, 2004 <laughs> to go to UCLA. And 20, I, 2004. Two, yes, uh, 2004 kids. <laughs> uh, 2004. Yeah. And I've been here ever since. Wow. That is amazing. So do you know Morgan Thompson by any chance? Name sounds super familiar. She went... Um, well, it's so funny because she went to that high school and she went to UCLA, UCLA. and we were all theater people. <gasps> Crazy. Just a small More, I probably do. We, so I graduated high school in 2009 and so did okay. she. So you might have like just oh, missed I think her. Oh, I missed her. But still. I'm older. It's like but, a lot of, And she went to UCLA. Crazy. Yeah. And theater. So funny enough, I was a theater major from my first semester <gasps> of college. My and God. then I switched to English. But Why'd I, you switch? Um, well, so I went to LMU. And okay. Yeah. They have so a good theater, theater school is very... So I was much more into like acting for film and acting for yes. TV, which is yes. what you do. Yeah. And the theater school at LMU was very, very, very stage focused. And so there was like a lot of stagecraft classes. I don't like that kind of stuff. I mean, we had to do like the architecture for the stage and I, I was oh, failing. Oh. I was like, I'm not good at this. I almost killed myself doing those scene shops. Yeah, like with those chainsaw, yeah. like don't give me and Jordan chainsaws. No, literally, and tell us the, the build chainsaw, the exactly. <laughs> so I wasn't enjoying that. I get that. And then I told myself, I'm going to switch to English. I love writing. I love English. And I can just try to act on the side outside of school. Yeah. And then I didn't end up doing that. So what you do is so cool to me because I really but you love it and I you love know it. it well. Yeah. And I, I had a similar a experience in college at UCLA, actually. I didn't graduate. I started as a theater major. I started as a musical theater major. Then I switched to just acting because I had actually had a Broadway call back in New York. This is like a pretty like life-shifting moment for me. And I'm still really good friends with this woman and her daughter. But I had a callback for a Broadway musical in New York. And the woman who wrote it was named Sherry Steinkellner. And she had written for Cheers and all these um, television shows. And she was also the mom of one of my friends I had just met at, at UCLA named Kit Steinkellner, who now did... Um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the show. Elizabeth Olsen, a beautiful show, Facebook Watch. It just came out or... We can look it up. I we'll love look it Elizabeth up. Olsen. Oh my gosh. I'll look it up while you're talking. I'm, I can't believe I'm blanking Kit. I'm so sorry, but it's a beautiful show and Kit is the show and created it. Anyways, she, her mom told me that, uh, like pulled me aside after my audition. It was a comedy audition. And she was like, you're really funny. She was like, Broadway will always be here. I really think that you should try to pursue something in comedy and television. And so I sort of switched from wanting to be like a musical theater Broadway gal to really focusing on film and TV. And then I, oh, wow, that's when so that cool. happened, yeah, but I, I had this similar experience at UCLA as the years went on in theater school, I was auditioning and it just wasn't like computing for me. And I actually switched my major to producing and really got into wanting to produce documentaries. So I actually graduated with like a BA in theater, film and television, but more on the producing side, which oh, is that's so really weird. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> also the only grade that wasn't an A my whole life was a C in acting at UCLA. Oh my God. No way. Yeah. Why was that? The teacher, the teacher did jive? not. I tried to, I, I, I brought comedy to the play I was in uh -huh. and he did not think that there should have been. And oh. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. Well, comedy is your thing. <laughs> it's my thing. Yes. And <laughs> it's like, it how is... boring. I, every good drama, by the way, has comedy. That's so true. Well, it's so needed. Yeah. It's so needed. But I still, I'm like, really bummed because like my GPA, I was a very academic kid. Right. And I'm like, wow, the one not, hey, in my life was in the thing that I do. For a right. Living. That's so funny. Oh, well, that just goes to show that yeah, school, kids out there. Yeah. School is not always a reflection of like your actual talents. <laughs> Amen. It really depends on the teacher. Very true. So much. So you've stayed in LA ever since then. Stayed in LA. And so what was the, what was like your life like before the big break? Yes. Um, it was, I was just telling you, I was sharing a one bedroom apartment in Brentwood, right? Post-college and basically worked like as a nanny and also at the Geffen on the weekends. So I was working seven days a week, but like barely making my rent. Uh, it was very difficult. And I'd been auditioning for years in LA, but um, had only gotten like a few guest stars and like a few things here and there. And Two Broke Girls literally was... Um, I read the script and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I love this character, but 
it'll never happen to me. And my husband goes, my husband goes, uh, I think that's what John Hamm said, like the night he got Mad Men or something. I, I was with my husband at the time before Two Broke Girls, which has been almost 10 and a half years. That's amazing. But, um, and then I went to the audition and still was like, I'm never gonna get this job. And I ended up doing it and got the job and thank God that they fought for me because I had never done you know, I had never been on television as the lead of a television show yeah, before. Yeah, that's huge. And as the lead of a show that became so successful. It was like literally overnight, but I'd been acting since I was three. But like right. the actual success genuinely for me was overnight. So what was that like to go from being, from nannying and doing all this other stuff to being like recognized everywhere? Well, I was scared to give up my one bedroom apartment we shared because I just wasn't sure if the pilot was going to go, which everybody's like, the pilot had Michael Patrick King, Kat Dennings. Right. <laughs> like really, you didn't you. think it was going to go? I was like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it was um, both incredible. <laughs> That's my voice. Yes. It was both incredible and um, like super stressful. I just like, I also, you know, didn't have so when you go from people don't realize this that when you go from like having ramen and mac and cheese and working seven days a week just to literally make your rent, then going to two broke girls, like I still wasn't able to like necessarily like afford or I didn't know about like red carpets and and so I was like I remember one time I well I wore the tags um to my final screen test. I had to go to Nordstrom and like had tags on everything because my my showrunner Michael Patrick King was like, you can't wear cowboy boots to the your test. Like she's from the Upper East Side. Do you own a pair of heels? And I lied. I was oh like, oh God. yeah, totally. Of course I do. <laughs> Did not own heels. Went and when he hugged me at the screen test, he's like, do you have tags on all your clothes? And I was like, <laughs> yes, I do. Um, because I thought I would have to return them right, if I didn't get the job. Right. But then that kind of led into even like I remember like I wore a Forever Twenty One. Like I wore Forever Twenty One clothes most of the first season on red carpets and stuff just because like so cool it it was and it's like now I'm like why did you think I was so embarrassed but now I look back and I'm like that was awesome like I think it's so cool I think now I'd be like now I'm just like sustainability fashion like I just want to switch everything into like only being environmentally conscious with clothes but yes but it also shows people you can you can be on those red carpets surrounded yeah. by all those extremely powerful people and like totally. come from wherever you've just come from. Yes. You can do it. You can. And like, had I probably not been 24, if I was in my thirties, like I love now being in my thirties, I probably would have had a lot more self-confidence. But at the time I felt really, I felt like an outsider in Hollywood and I still kind of do. I feel like a nerd. <laughs> and I I felt like that overnight with Two Broke Girls. I right. just felt That's lost. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, don't so many people in Hollywood feel like nerds? You like, would think, it's Jordan. It's creative type. I just feel like people are cool. I don't know. I just felt like, sort of like I did in middle school, like where I was not part of the cool kids club. And, and um, I don't know why I've always felt that in mm-hmm. Hollywood. It just... And I have amazing friends. And thank God I had Kat Dennings. I had two really good friends through Two Broke Girls, Kat Dennings, and still do, Kat and Christina Hendricks, um, because my husband was on Mad Moms, Christina, who really took me under their wing and like helped me navigate, okay, this is what a publicist does. This is what you need. Mm -hmm. At a photo shoot, I was uncomfortable. They were like, okay, Kat, you know, would always be there to be like, no, 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 she doesn't want to do that. You know, like it was very, I thank God for them because I had sort of like coaches (laughs) through Hollywood who I could trust. But um yeah, it it was like definitely took a toll on my like mental health and my right. body. And I'm like a classic perfectionist. And so, um, you know, if I messed up one word of a line, like I would have a panic attack in my dressing room. I never showed it on set, but like I would go back to my dressing room and cry and have a panic attack. And then eventually a few years into Two Broke Girls, I found transcendental meditation. And that was sort of like the beginning of health for me. Yes, um, the game changer. Game changer. How did you find it? I, so I got to a point in my actual physical health where for a full seven months, my entire body was covered in like this grayscale Game of Thrones level rash situation. It, I, they thought it was like a psoriasis maybe. And I went to all these dermatologists and they did all these biopsies and tests and they were like, it's not coming back as anything dermatological. And then I went to, I'm blanking on the kind of doctor, but it's a doctor that puts like acupuncture in your ear it starts with an A. 
I'm just not sure how to say it, but that's so cool. I've yeah, heard of it. I, I don't know what it's called either. It's like a little ball and it goes in your ear. And he was the one, he did all these tests on me and he was like, this is viral. Like you have a virus from deep rooted stress. So he's like, you need to get stress under control and you need to like eat healthier. And at the time, like two broke girls, like I was like, donuts, pizza, craft service, 24, like whatever. Right. Um, I did not have a healthy lifestyle. And so the beginning was TM to sort of just get even the most basic anxiety under control and have like a practice that I could go back to when I started to feel stressed. Cause I also didn't get it in period the entire run of two broke girls. Oh, wow. That's just stress. It like was a body lot. Was under and it was very stress. physical. Like the show for me, I which I loved so much, but I got to do a lot of physical comedy, but the long hours in those heels, because my character wore like seven inch right. Louboutins, which was amazing. I looked That's cool. That's so fun. But like my body really took the oh toll. Oh my God, I can't even wear heels for five minutes. Oh my gosh, my, my character on the neighborhood wears sneakers and it's like, and I'm a mom. I'm like, this is the best. Yeah, like, that's so awesome. nice. But I love doing all the physical stuff. But my doctor was like, your adrenals, you're like uh, the equivalent of an athlete, like an Olympic athlete right. who maybe wouldn't get her period because your body is just constantly going both physically and mentally. Wow. Um, but I really had to change my whole like diet lifestyle. I found TM and then I found horses, which was like probably more life-changing than anything. Oh my and God. still is. I actually got chills when you said that just now for some reason. And then I know that you work with horses and they're so therapeutic. I Whitney Cummings, who was co-creator of Two Broke Girls, she had told me not only about TM, but she also told me about um, horses. And she said she had a friend named Cassandra Ogier who did just groundwork equine therapy. And I was like, well... My body's breaking down. Like, I might as well try this. I knew we had a horse on Two Broke Girls that I loved. And every time the horse was in the scene, I would just feel like super zen and yeah. comfortable. And, and so I understood like, okay, there's something about these beings that are like super spiritual, super grounding. And I literally did, I think, three equine therapy lessons with uh, Cassandra Ogier and then was like, I got to rescue a horse. And I oh knew gosh. nothing about horses. I was, I loved them as a little girl, but I was not an equestrian. Like I didn't grow up knowing how to ride or anything. And honestly, like it makes me want to cry, but that horse killed me. Like I rescued her, but it's like, she rescued of my course. whole family. Of course. <laughs> um, What's her name? Uh, her name is Belle. She's a paint mare, half Mustang. Her mom was BLM Mustang Rescue. So, Amazing. Um, and she was rescued from like a really severe, like abuse, like oh. physical abuse situation. Kills me. Kills me. And she's the sweetest ever. So but where does she live? She lives in the valley in oh, a cool. barn. I wish she lived at my house. Mm -hmm. That's my dream someday yes, to have yes. a farm. Next manifestation. Yes, yes. But she's been so healing. My, my sister's a survivor of sexual assault. And so- as soon as the horse started to heal me, I was like, you have to work with horses. Like it's, you know, traditional talk therapy is so incredible and I'm such a fan of it. I have a therapist. I love it. I think it's amazing. But there's something about horses, you know, because they're prey animals. So they're so intuitive that they can sense, you know, a mountain lion who's a mile away, but they can also sense when you're not being authentic as yourself. And so in order to communicate with them, you have to show up authentically. So you can't go to the barn and be like, I'm not scared at all, even though you're feeling freaking right, terrified. Right. They, will, they won't respond. They'll be taken aback and pushed away. So I found it super empowering that I had to come out of my mind and into my body and ground into like the most authentic version of myself in order to communicate with Belle. And you remember that feeling. And I right. think that's the power of equine therapy. And you're in the present moment when you're with them always. Yes. So it's like Eckhart Tolle, like everybody who tells you the key is the present moment. It's just a most beautiful way to be in the present moment without effort. I completely agree. Animals yeah. are so, so healing. healing. I love horses. Me I haven't too. spent enough time around horses. You gotta horses. come to our barn. I will. I will. I it's would love so, to My come. husband just rescued a horse. Like he got into it because of me. My sister and her boyfriend have horses. Like they're like up trying to do therapy. My sister's a therapist. So she's trying to incorporate horses into her practice now. And like, they're yeah, amazing. they're amazing. Yeah, I feel like horses and cats. I don't know if you're a cat person. I cats loved cats growing up. I'm so allergic healing. now. So I don't, I'm mean, I can't have I have no one. idea where Hudson, my cat is right now. He's been I'm like I'm not allergic at your house. I haven't felt anything. So <laughs> okay. you must be very clean. We are. <laughs> but everybody who has cat allergies is not allergic to him. So Ooh, that's I want to try thing. that yeah. maybe because I would love to have we'll a cat. Have to we have a dog, him. but she's a Yorkie because the hair of a Yorkie, 
is the only hair that like my husband and I don't have an allergy oh, to. Oh, cool. Because it's, it's hair like human hair, which is crazy. Interesting. I know. I love that. But he's like 6'3 and walks. Like he looks like a linebacker and he walks this little dog. He's had people like pull over and be like, dude, that's not your dog, right? And he's like, it is that my is dog. so cute. And he's like, so perfect are together. together. So cute. I love that so much. But yes, animals are, and I think, I mean, I think there's many reasons, but I think like it's the present moment thing. Yes. And the love, like, Everybody says that they give you unconditional love, but I actually think it's us that give them the unconditional love and it teaches us to love deeper. Yeah, I have that feeling too. Yeah. Well, I, in a very spiritual sense, because you know I'm like so out there when it comes to all the spiritual stuff. I mean, you're not out there to me. No, I'm you like, get it, you get you it. You should so hear me upset. Think... People think I'm crazy. I'm like, this is my oat straw nettle infusion. They're just oh, like, yes. like, this is my chia superfood. I they're can like, only imagine it. myself they write it in a my setting character. like that. Oh, that's so fun. Because <laughs> they're like, so this is the vegan meatloaf I made. <laughs> that's so perfect. I think animals are like, true creations from above. So God, universe, higher self. Yep. When I look at Hudson, my cat, I see God. Hudson, where are you? And that sounds so good. Huddy, come out. I feel the exact um, same way with horses. And, and then you see yourself because it's like Absolutely. a reflection. That is. And so us humans here on this earth, how lucky are we to have these furry animals? Like where did they even come from I is know. my thing. They're so... God-like. And there's always, you're so right, like anytime their spirit just like, it envelops your body in a not mental way. And I yes, think that yes. that's like the epitome of a higher power. Well, they don't power. have phones. They don't, they're not no. distracted, <laughs> you know, like they don't have right. worries like yeah. we do. And so I can be so wrapped up in my work and my phone and my computer. And Hudson just looks at me like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. let's go play or let's just cuddle or let's just lay in the sun. And it's like this telepathy that happens and it's so beautiful. And they don't hold on to like horses. I actually remind myself this when I'm on the verge of a panic attack. Horses also, they're, they, if they are sensing that a mountain lion is in their herd, they're going to be tense for the moment that they are intuitively with the herd trying to, to communicate and figure out what they need to do. Do we need to run? Is there a threat? But once the threat's gone, they don't hold on to trauma like we do. Like they Literally, don't yes. know. I was just talking to my mom about this yesterday because it was so funny. Two or three nights ago, my husband's family came over with their dog and our cat doesn't really know dogs. And so Aww. he likes dogs like when he sees them out in the hallway and stuff like our neighbors. But this dog was in our home. And so it's like Ooh, cats are territorial. Yes. So basically he was kind of scared. He hissed in the in the dog's face and he's like such a peaceful cat but he like went full <laughs> oh hiss like all of his his fur on his spine went up and stuff and then when everybody left and went home and we felt so bad obviously I was yeah. like closing the door to our room and being like you're fine you're okay this it's is okay, your Hudson. room and then everybody left and he was like so chill and so yeah. happy and just slept in my arms and he yeah. was purring and I was saying to my mom animals because she was like how was Hudson later was he mad at you guys because cats they do hold grudges sometimes yeah <laughs> and Hudson was no I was like it's he remembers but he doesn't he doesn't hold the grudge or he remembers yeah. but he doesn't hold the trauma he's like I'm so happy now my house is my house again and yeah it, I don't know it's just such a thing and you're so right and it's really hard, as you know, and I've known from all the spiritual work and reading we, we've done that, like the trauma we hold to it, it's kind of subconscious trauma we hold in our bodies. So right. like, it's really deep and it's really hard to get that somatically It's 100% out. subconscious, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's like the biggest, even with just 2020 and the stress of this year, I we've been in fight or flight with COVID and everything going on. I'm like how much are we holding? Like, it makes so me want to breathe. Like, it, I just went like this because it's I like know. my anxiety starts. So then it's like, I don't want to, I want to release it somehow, you know? know, and and exercise is great and all these things. But like, I don't know. I think it's like what you said. I think almost animals are like a great channel into figuring out how we can release it as humans. They teach you know? us for they sure. They teach us. Yeah. They're Buddhas. They Buddha are. Hudson, Buddha Bell. I know. We're Buddha so Betty. lucky. We're so lucky to have them. <laughs> I know. So I want to talk to you about anxiety because I know this is something that you've struggled with yes. and I have too. What have you found that has helped you? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I've had it my whole life. I don't know if you have too. Like I was for a really sure. anxious for sure. kid. I, yeah. 
for me, it manifests. I can tell you the exact moment I had my first panic attack. And it's really interesting. And I don't think she would mind me saying it because she also listens to your podcast. Um, my friend Alicia and I, we were on a plane to the Broadway callback in New York that I was telling you about earlier, actually. And um, there was a problem and the, the pilot came out and they were like, we were going to have to emergency land. And so scary. it was so scary because there were people screaming and crying. I mean, it was like, it really wasn't that big of a deal, but the people on the plane and for her and I, we were 18. So we had like just gotten to college, but both of us after that plane incident, um, started to have panic attacks in college. Mine for the years until I got to broke girls, my panic attacks stemmed from hypochondriac stuff. So it was always like fear of cancer or if I saw anything on my body. Mm -hmm. And then once two broke girls happened, I think all my panic stemmed from not feeling enough, the perfectionism. Um, and now it's just a plethora of all of them. No, now I feel like it's it's the work that I had to do. You know, at TM, horses, those were two things that really helped me. Something recently that I cannot recommend enough if I don't, I don't know, I, was, I assume you're familiar, but yoga nidra. Yeah. Which is like, if people don't know, it's you're lying in Shavasana. It's a guided body scan meditation, but it actually is proven, especially with people with trauma or PTSD to release it from your body. Very simple, very basic. You don't do any yoga poses. It's so it's nice. so relaxing. Do you have um, a person that you do that with? I do. Meditation chick on Instagram, Hillary Jackendoff. She's amazing. She also has free insight timer meditations. So I highly, oh, cool. highly recommend her. That really changed because sometimes I'm too high in anxiety to even drop into transcendental meditation. But I think TM is more of like a masculine in the yin yang and yoga nidra is more of the feminine. And so it's a lot easier for me if I'm needing more of the feminine right. to drop in that way. I know. I feel like the feminine is probably so healing for you because yeah. so much of your life it's is go -go. the masculine, active, yes. Yes. perfectionism, all that kind of stuff. Yes. I think the feminine energy is probably so, so healing for you. Yes. So that was amazing. I will say, you know, something that I think I struggled with for years and still have to pull myself back from is what my husband calls the man with the snake oil thing with anxiety, where for years I was just trying everything I could to um, find the answer to anxiety. And like, I can give you the list, you know, that then also changing my diet I found the medical medium who I know mm -hmm. you're oh, yeah. super we familiar with. We've all really deep. We love Anthony. you, Anthony. Thank you so much. Anthony, we're obsessed. But gut health and mental health are really related as well. So finding, you know, I had just, I grew up a kid who was like, had the diet of a five-year-old boy. I love pizza, donuts, everything you can imagine. And I, it was like emotional for me. And so it was really, Anthony comes from such a spiritual place with his books with, um, how to heal our bodies. And that was really as someone who really loves any sort of spiritual connection, as opposed to just like restricting, because I don't believe in, in a, I don't believe everybody's body's the same. And I don't believe in like necessarily having to like restrict yourself. Totally. Um, but we talked about it. It's like, but then when you feel how good you feel, it doesn't feel like restriction anymore. And I exactly. think that's where I turned mm -hmm. the leaf, but being, um, not, obsessing the perfectionism so much, even in like the way I eat, the way I meditate, the way I do everything to have some sort of like freedom and flow. And to know that like anxiety is something that's like, it's not ever going to go away for me, but it's something I can carry like under my arm and hold with me and know I can be tender with myself and say like, okay, anxiety is here right now, but it's okay. And I don't have to go chase the next health, um, thing to, to, to think that it's someday going to go away. I can learn to be okay with it. And I think that's been sort of my new goal is like, I am enough. Perfectionism doesn't exist, but anxiety and that feeling of, um, sort of just the uncertainty of the future because none of us have any certainty. True. And I don't know about you, but like, for me, I just feel like the deep rooted, like beyond the layer of perfectionism, beyond the layer of health or death is like the fear of just, I don't know what tomorrow brings. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the future brings in any way, in my career, in right. health, in family and my husband. What if, if there's a bus, you know, like, I know. so embracing that. That's the crazy thing about being human. I know. Nothing is guaranteed. And we're, we're guaranteed to suffer though. 
Like there's never going to be like one thing that like changes it, but having that acceptance, right? And that yeah. love. If you accept it, it doesn't have, suffering doesn't have to be a bad thing. Exactly. As we talk about like these huge challenges that we've been dealt are a gift. Yes. They don't always feel like a gift, but, but they, they ultimately really are. are. Anxiety is a gift. Everything is a gift to wake you up deeper to these tools, these modalities, yes. and then just having so much more compassion. And like, the if you empathy. think about it without your anxiety, oh my gosh. you wouldn't have really been introduced to the horse therapy. Yep. And, and couldn't have helped other women. Right, right. exactly. Okay, you guys. So a question I get all the time is how do I take care of my hair? Especially because my hair has gotten so long in quarantine. It's not even funny. It's down to my waist. And that is just true. So Function of Beauty is the hair care that is formulated specifically for you. No matter your hair type or color, they create shampoo, conditioner, and treatments that fit your unique needs. How unique, you ask? They have over 54 trillion possible ingredient combinations to make sure that your formula is as unique as you are. And you guys, I'm obsessed with mine. You can choose what comes on the bottle and it comes with these really cute stickers. So mine says function of soul on fire, obviously, because we are the soul on fire podcast. And even though it's in my bathroom, I'm getting so many compliments on it. I've been showing it off to my friends. Everybody loves it. And I've gotten so many people in my personal life to order. All of their formulas are vegan and cruelty-free. They never use sulfates, parabens, or any other harmful ingredients. And you can also choose your scent. You can choose just how natural you want it to be. So of course, I went with the most natural option because that's just me. But like I said, everything is vegan and cruelty-free, so you don't have to worry. And they are the top rated customized hair care brand. They have 40,000 real five star reviews on their site and counting. So head to functionofbeauty.com slash blonde to receive a very special offer, which is 20% off of your first order. That is functionofbeauty.com slash blonde for 20% off and to let them know that you heard about it from our show. Functionofbeauty.com slash blonde. You guys will fall in love. Mine smells like eucalyptus, it smells so good. And and I'm obsessed. I use the shampoo, the conditioner, the leave-in conditioner, and the hair mask. It's so cute and so amazing. Now let's head back into this episode with Beth. And I think like, look, I mean, there's also like, I'm not, uh, if you are someone who needs medication because anxiety has gotten to a point where you can't handle it. Like I am someone who also believes that like we should erase the stigma around that as well, that it's yeah. whatever works for you and your body. And I've had experience with the natural and I've had experience with medication and it's been amazing. You I know. love that. We both love Glennon, Glennon Doyle. Doyle. And Glennon Doyle is like, Jesus loved me this I know before he gave me Lexapro. Yes, That's exactly, what she always exactly. Says. And I love her for that. Yeah. I mean, reading Untamed and oh. hearing her talk about what did she say? Like um, having depression and anxiety is like being Eeyore and Tigger at the same time. Yes. I was like, oh my God, that's me. Totally. And I don't even consider myself to have depression, but mine's, I, yeah, I have mine's anxiety. extreme anxiety, but yeah. I still get those highs and lows and, lows. and I can yeah. go very dark totally. with whatever it is. Maybe it is depression. And so <laughs> to hear her say that, and to just be a sensitive soul in this world. I mean, of course we feel that way. Absolutely. And I do think that like mental health in this country, there is a stigma and there's like still that sort of like, we can't talk about this mentality or if we get help in some way, like we're not, you know, able to fight through. And and I think that's like a patriarchal society construct that like, as women, I'm really passionate about. And Glennon's been amazing with this too, but like, breaking it down that like, we, we don't have to fight through. We can say that we're having a hard time and seek help, especially as women, as nurturers, as, you know, our archetype or whatever is wanting to nurture everyone else. We have to nurture ourselves and we have to be okay with the fact that like, we're going to need nurturing. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) And I think it's so amazing that you talk about it because I think a lot of people in your industry, specifically in Hollywood, suffer and don't so talk about it. People. And like, yeah. even just the amount of people that in my my own health struggles that I've come across who are these like very well-known celebrities. And I'm like, you have this and you don't like, and I get it. I don't judge at all. But I also think like, 
have seeing that on the back end, I'm like, everybody struggles. Everybody's got something. Mm -hmm. And just erasing the stigma about the fact that like, you know, to put on a perfect, which I love. That's why I love you and everything you put out with your stuff is that like, you're just so truthful and honest, but you have such a pure, kind heart and a way of bringing people together with you. And I feel like, I feel that responsibility as someone who like has a platform too, that it's like, I, you know, I, I, I just felt like I can't hide like the fact that I have anxiety anymore because mm-hmm. it's, it felt so, um, selfish almost. Right. Like, and you help so many people by sharing it. That's my goal. That's why with Glennon, Glennon was on this podcast. I started harmonics, but even the podcast was started that I wanted to start was because some of my traditional, when COVID first hit, my hypochondriac anxiety was like, I was going to say with COVID, you must be <laughs> that was a hypochondria real shit show. central. Yeah. Um, I get it. And some of my like healing modalities that I had really always worked for me. Horses was a no brainer. Those always work. Going to the see the horse never didn't make me feel great. But some of the like the TM, it was really hard for me to exercise, to drop into meditation, even yoga nidra. I just, it was, I was really feeling out of my body, but I was starting to put on records that I loved and music and sort of just sitting and letting my body absorb the music. And then I was doing that consistently. And I thought to myself, I, I would love to talk to people about the power of creativity, spirituality, and wellness, and sort of the intersection of all three, because I do think there's something about music that is speaking of like with horses and animals, that is a connection to like divine source, whatever you believe that is so, um, it's like, it's like somatic in our bodies, like a a beat or a rhythm. It's like our heartbeat. It goes back to like tribal ancient cultures, you know? And so I really just wanted to explore that in like, um, the, through the lens of music and creativity, Mm -hmm. um, and like Glennon with writing, you know, what is it? What's in your writer too? Like, how does that look for you? (laughs) Now I'm interviewing you, Jordan, but like, how does that creative, do you find your creativity to be one of your most healing. Yeah. Beyond, beyond, beyond. I mean, it's everything to me. Like when I tap into my soul and I ask my higher self, what's my purpose here on this earth? Writing always comes. And so it's changed over time. First, it was writing, writing fiction, writing memoir, which is obviously what I kind of blog about every day is just my life. And then recently when I asked that question, it's to be a channel, to be a channel for the divine. And that comes through with writing, with talking on the podcast. Um, But writing is it for me. Like that's when I'm in the flow. Yes. And that's why Glennon is like one of my ultimate (sighs) expanders as 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 our friend Lacey Uh, would say. Glennon is is that for me because she she does it and she does what I like to do, which is she writes about her life life. with this beautiful way of... It helps so many people. She's I not mean, just writing about her life like it's a diary. It's like these are truths that that change people's lives, that yeah. have people leave relationships, start relationships, have the courage to go on medication, like all sorts of things. So that's my inspiration and and that heals me. And yes. I cannot tell you the amount of people who healers who I've seen and mediums who I've seen who tell me when you write your story. With Lyme, you won't have it anymore. That's how you will heal. Ooh, and so wow. if it tells you anything about like resistance and procrastination, even when you want something so deeply, I've been told that for three years. And every day I'm like, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and then and then my life, you know, changes so much and I'm always learning new things. And I want this healing book to have everything, everything. in it. Yeah. But I'm letting go of my perfectionism. <sighs> Cause it's not going to be perfect and it's going to be the first of many. And that's what I'm finally like, okay, I'm going to be like a Gabby Bernstein or a Glennon Doyle where like you look back on book yeah. number one and yes, their life has changed, but it doesn't mean it doesn't help people and it doesn't meet people where they are. Yep. And then you just keep doing it. Have and you so, heard of the vomit draft? You just got to get no. out your vomit draft. Yeah, That's what I we do. call it in screenwriting. Oh, like, I, oh, I love that. You just, it's called your vomit draft. So there's no perfection on it. You're literally just vomiting out your feelings. I need that. And then you, at least you've got the draft right. and you've done it. And then you can go back and refine it exactly. or add or subtract. That's but, what Ryan Holiday, who I just oh, had on yeah, the podcast. I haven't listened yet, but yeah. I'm so excited he to said, listen to him. Because, he said, you can edit, or what did he say? It was this perfect quote about, you can edit bad writing, but you can't edit writing that doesn't exist. exist. Ooh. And I was like, okay, 
if that was not a sign, because that was what I needed to hear. And my yeah. mom listened to the episode. She's like, you asked him all questions that you like By desperately want to know. That's my whole podcast. Oh, I'm I know. Like, Why Brandi else? Carla, what was it like? Because I watched you do Joni Mitchell. At, <laughs> Literally. What was it like being with Joni Mitchell that night and singing her song? Like, I'm just asking that's her the stuff, stuff that I, I want to know. know. Yeah. And that's, that's why else to have a Guys, podcast. start a podcast. <laughs> I just think everybody people. should have a podcast. <laughs> everybody. I mean, I like... Yeah, like a question that I have for you in that sense is what's it like to be a part of Hollywood? Like you talked about kind of feeling like like an outsider, but I am so curious to hear more from you about that. I mean, truly like the both the shows that I've been on for multiple years now, Two Work Girls was almost six and a half by the time we finished with the pilot and everything. And then this year has been, the neighborhood's been three years the actual day-to-day of coming to work feels like I'm with my family. Like in my like actual day-to-day of my job, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm with the greatest people. The neighborhood is truly one of the most special groups of people I've ever worked with in my entire life. And That's Max so Greenfield cool. from New Girl, I don't know, Schmidt, he played Schmidt on the New Girl, but he and I had worked together on a movie before. And so when we got to come together to do the show, I just knew I loved him as a human too. So that I've been very lucky to work with humans that I love who are also my coworkers. That's so that's the not best. always the case, I don't think. And I've been super lucky. Yeah. And calling that in through manifestation. Definitely. Yeah, um, you call that in. But I feel very much like an outsider, um, I guess, media-wise or glamour-wise or red carpet-wise. Like I'm still the girl in soccer shorts and a ponytail. And I'm, you know, my best friends are still my friends from UCLA that I see, you know, I'm, I'm, I love that. I'm not really into going out. I, and I, I like doing a talk show gives me so much more anxiety than acting. When I'm acting, I'm in flow. I'm Mm -hmm. like you, especially laughter. Laughter to me is like, the healing solve we all need. There's a lot of similarities between music and what it does to our bodies and laughter. There's like a tension and a release. And I feel like both of those things are super healing. So for me, I'm the same way. Like my flow state is when I'm acting. It's the going on like David Letterman or, well, that's such an old reference. Well, uh, but Fallon still like the biggest of all, right? Gordon, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. or Ellen or actually Ellen's yeah. not, I love her show and I, I love going on that show now. Yeah, so that doesn't give me stressed so cool. out anymore, but like mm-hmm. having to like dress up, put on hair and makeup, you know, and, and it took me a long time too, I think. And that's why I love just what you said about anxiety being a gift also to just like love my body in a way that wasn't trying to also be a perfectionist when it came to body image as we all know, Hollywood can be really um, stressful in that sense. And it took me a really long time to have like a healthy relationship with exercise. Like I was very much into like adrenal burning, like crazy workouts, like CrossFits and running and all of these things. And actually like the past few years, I've really taken a step back and just been like gentle yoga hiking, like, and I've sort of fell in more in my love with my body doing those things. Not that there's anything wrong with like the hardcore workouts, whatever works for you. But I think for me, because I'm such a fight or flight with my anxiety, that when I was doing those hardcore exercises with panic, it was like my adrenals were just burning out. And so now I'm like, I am just going to do, and like Melissa Wood Health, 26 minute flow exactly. or like down dog app, 26 minute, or I got a Peloton. So it's like a 30 minute spin, beginner level, like great. And That's I so feel perfect. so much better. Definitely. I've had a similar experience. Yeah. I was so into high intensity running marathons. Oh my and- God. It was a lot. I mean, cortisol wise, like yes, I was really not healthy. Yes, yeah, same. And I, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I was like gaining so much weight. My skin was a mess, and then I eventually got very sick with Lyme, and all the cortisol and the adrenal stuff, like everything was not balanced. So now I'm not opposed to that type of workout, no. but I would do it like once a week. Yes. If I did it at all, which I don't, yep. but <laughs> if, if I did, and my husband works for Orange Theory and I'm a Oh my huge, God, I used to go to Orange Theory every yeah, day. I loved it. Love so, Orange I, by the way, Theory. I still love it. I yeah. just can't do which it Which one my did body. you go to? Um, West Hollywood. Oh yeah. Do you have a favorite know. coach? Uh, um, um, oh my God. Starts with a K. Is it a girl? She's a woman. Yeah, she's awesome. Oh, uh, I know them all. I don't know why oh I can't gosh. think of- gosh. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. What she was like? <laughs> Beautiful Indian woman. Oh, wait. Maybe I don't know her. She was awesome. This was probably, I was doing it before my wedding, which was great mm-hmm. to get in shape for my wedding, but I was like still stressed out. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was that West Hollywood. Yeah, no, I'm, um, I'm sure. I mean, he's a co- my I love Orange now. Theory. Yeah. That was my favorite, like, workout. Like, I, I love, know. I can't, I have a labral tear in my hips. So truly another reason I had to stop running mm-hmm. was that. And then I just started walking and I yeah. realized I felt a lot Walking better. is very walk. healthy too, especially for love those of it. us who have anxiety, like oh, to walk nature. in nature and hike. It's so healing. I love it. Yeah. I'll take my horse on a hike. Like I won't ride. I'll just walk that's her and so I love it. Fun. It's my favorite okay, thing to do on the weekend. Come do with you. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So let's oh go on God. a hike with your horse. That and there's like so other fun. animals there. There's donkeys and goats and I all love sorts that. of, you would oh love our barn. Yeah. I've been sure. introducing so many of my friends to like horses. They're all like, oh yeah, God, this is I love horses. And there's so many volunteer, like you don't have to have, I know they're very expensive for people. It's not like a dog or a cat, but like uh, there's so many rescues and horse uh, like therapy programs that you can come learn and volunteer if you like want to learn more about horses. So I highly recommend That's so wherever cool. you are in the world <laughs> doing yeah. that. Yeah. Love. So you're plant-based. How long have you been plant-based? So I'm plant-based. I do do a little bit of poultry um, a few times a week, if that, but I'm, I, I've only been fully dairy-free, mostly vegan, gluten-free for probably like four and a half, five months now. Okay. But I feel like a different person. I truly, and honestly sticking with it was the only way to feel the difference because I have tried so many times over the years to go vegan because I love animals, the environment, all of it that like, I just like really wanted to, but I think a, I wasn't doing it healthily. I was like really restrictive and didn't have the right, um, sort of, uh, way of like, like I discovered smoothies was a way I don't love vegetables. So I discovered really packed smoothies with vegetables and fruit. I love, so good, and I think that's it. It's like, everybody's different. So I was trying to figure it out. And when I finally did through, it was through really the medical medium stuff, honestly, um, that I was able to stick to it and realize like, oh my gosh, like I have, I never have that three o'clock crash. Like on set, everybody goes like on a coffee run, you know, at three or four o'clock before the evening shoot, you know? And I just don't have that anymore. And I feel like my anxiety is genuinely better. That's truly incredible. It helps with that. I swear. I really, and even like if I am going to have poultry, I've been, I don't know if you're into, if you've seen the Chris Kiss the Ground documentary or I like regenerative it, agriculture. I have just the best things. Oh my I need gosh. To watch it. They're an amazing. I donate to them every month. They're one of my favorite nonprofits. I think incredible. the work they're doing is incredible. Check them out if you haven't. But uh, a friend of mine who's really big in regenerative agriculture found me a farm called Primal Pastures for poultry that's like all um, regenerative and humane and all of that. So I feel less guilty yeah. if I'm going to have poultry when I, I do have that. no judgment. I feel like I everybody's going to do what works for them. Totally. Absolutely. That perfect. And there's, if you source meat or whatever from the right places, like that are it's right. helping climate change and treating the animals humanely, I, I feel like so much better about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. From like a moral <laughs> standpoint. But yes, we are medical medium girls. I he, know. He's life-changing. He I really mean, is. Anthony, that detox smoothie I do every morning. Yeah, heavy metal detox smoothie. And the celery juice. Celery juice. I miss celery juice when I don't have it. I know. It's really My hard body to stick to with it. full-time work again. Yeah. <laughs> what time do you go into the office? The office. Or the, the set. set. Yeah. Um, I know it kind of, yeah. Well, Your it just office. depends on the day. So it changes up. But if I have a later call time, I'll make the celery juice. Sometimes if I'm up at 5.30 and like have to be at work at 6.30 or 7, I can't. That is intense. I just can't with meditate because I have my whole routine. Mm-hmm. So I like, I have my meditation, you know, and I have to make my smoothies for work. Yeah. So like it, I do though notice when I have celery juice every day, my skin, everything is just so, it's I just feel so hydrated. It. I feel good. Like, yes. I know. It's so good. It's so good. It's crazy. So yeah. you, what's your like typical daily routine? You work, do you work five days a week? Yes. So it's, I'm on a sitcom. So it's almost like a nine to five in the sense that like, well, Mondays and Tuesdays are shoot days, so they can go later because we used to shoot in front of a live audience. Now with COVID, we honestly don't. Mm-hmm. And it's sad. both great and sad. Great in the sense that like we don't have to shoot until later into the night. Yeah. So I get home for That's dinner nice. with like my husband and dog. But uh, but it, we do miss the energy of like comedy with live audience. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. But um, wake up. Usually I'm really, um, something else I've learned a lot from listening to like Lacey Phillips stuff is just sort of the cycles of nature and like sunrise and sunset. So I've been trying this year, particularly to get up 
like when the sun does, so it's like 5, 45, 6. I meditate. I love Joe Dispenza's meditations and books, um, but I'll also do sometimes yoga nidra. Just depends when in the day. Sometimes I'll save yoga nidra for like three o'clock, four o'clock if I um, need a little pick me up at work. But uh, and then I make breakfast. I usually I've been really into doing like um, gluten free oats with chia seeds, cinnamon, and like we. My husband keeps bees, so like raw honey from That's the bees. That's so cool. Just awesome. But, oh, Anthony would love that. The raw honey. Yes. It's so as healing. long as it's clean and yeah, right. Um, raw honey, and then I make smoothies for the day and my lunches for the day, and uh, bring it to me with me to work because now with COVID protocols for food and stuff on set, you were like much more. Um, like there's not really that craft service like right. there used to be. I mean, there is, but it's much more structured and not as like fun, which is probably better for this like new diet yeah, of the health, health of that I'm mm-hmm. doing. Um, and then I go to work and I laugh all day, which is so lovely. That's so fun. It's so fun with the best people ever. Um, and then, yeah. And then on the weekends, it's horse time and nature time for me. It's like sacred, my weekends. Yeah. I don't know how you are about that, but oh, I, yeah. I was never like that. I was working a lot on the weekends and now it's just a non-negotiable Me too. for my anxiety. I have Me to too. reset. Yes. Yeah. When I'm planning podcast guests and people are like, well, I'm available on Saturday. Saturday. I'm like, that's not I happening. Can't. It's not. And but I used to all the I time. have to work. Like right. sometimes, and I also learn lines every weekend. So it's never like um, completely free of work. Well, that's why you need the Even reset. more so, the downtime. Well, two row girls, I was learning like 60 pages a week. This is much easier as far as yeah, lines go. I was going to ask a you about that. Cast. How, how does that work? Like, is it just your memory just gets so good? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, it's, it's memory. And also on a sitcom, you rehearse all week. So if the script doesn't change too much, although on a sitcom, jokes usually change all the time. So you don't want to memorize too, the wrong things, you know, too yeah. early. So I usually wait till Saturday and Sunday, but I do it like I did at school. I like type up my lines by rote on Saturday oh, wow. on my computer just over and over again. I might have like, you know, music or something. Oh, oh hi, Hudson. Hudson. Finally came out. <laughs> oh, I drew him out with my line learning uh, yes. chat. Um, and then I, and then on Sunday, I like sort of do it on my feet. And then by Monday, I'm ready to go. Does but your husband like help you and stand he in He does if I really need help, but it's been almost 10 years of television at this point. So right. I'm pretty quick, but, um, but like I'm the kind of actor, some actors don't, oh my God, his eyes are so beautiful. I know, isn't he handsome? He's so handsome. Come here, Squeak. Hi, Hudson. Oh my Come God, here. he's so cute. I mean, see, he communicates. It's <gasps> full telepathy. Come here, little Hi, man. buddy. Oh, he's beautiful. I Thank love him. You. I, I love Katz's blue eyes. Yeah. Bella's blue eyes. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Come here, Squeak. But yeah, uh, line learning. I'm one of those actors who like, I have to know them inside and out completely so that I can let go, especially in comedy. I don't mm-hmm. want to ever be thinking about my line. I want to be like so in the music of the yeah. moment, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. I haven't memorized lines in so long, <laughs> but I literally still have dreams that I don't that know. That you them. don't know. Oh my god. That gosh. I have to like show up for some play or whatever. Cause in high school it was all about like the plays for me. Oh yeah. I will still dream about that. It's and the it's worst just coming dream, to right? me now that we're talking about it, the where worst. there'll be like an entire script and I'm like, I don't even think I've seen it. Yeah. Oh my God. And it's, then you have to just go out in front of all mm-hmm. those people. The only panic attack I've ever had from at, like on stage. It's never happened to me because usually I'm more comfortable on stage than I am off. But in New York, I did like my dream. I got to do a play at MCC in New York, New York Times. It was opening what night. play? It was called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Gynecologic Oncology Unit at Sloan Kettering Memorial Cancer Center. Oh my I can't God. even say the full wow. title anymore. It was, it was amazing. Hallie Sounds Pfeiffer good. wrote it. She's incredible. Trip Coleman directed it, which was great. But I like, it, I, um, the character also, it was like, uh, it was a dramedy. So I also was in like pretty serious subject matter, um, to sort of live in all day until I did the play. But for some reason, I was just my perfectionism on opening night. I had a lot of people there. A lot of industry people were there. And I, it was the first time in my whole life I had a panic attack while I was doing the play on stage. And my husband was in the audience. He's the only one who noticed. My cast didn't even notice. Oh, wow. But when I got off stage, I like full on hyperventilated, like couldn't move, collapsed. Like I was <gasps> mortified. It was truly like one of the most embarrassing moments of my life, my career. Just, but nobody the, noticed. Nobody noticed except my husband. How did tell. he notice? He just said that he, he just knows. Well, I mean, we've been together so long. He yeah. just knew in my eyes that like, 
he didn't know I was having a panic attack, but he knew something was off. Yeah. Um, and I, I literally had the physical symptoms. Like, you know what a panic attack feels like. Oh, As yeah. I was Where saying like lines. It was blaring my out. worst nightmare. Nobody knew we got a New York Times critic pick. It was a great That's review. Like incredible. Like, I, everything. But it kind of bummed me out because I was so perfectionist about like proving because I'd been on sitcoms, you know? So I was like, it was, to me, it was like the panic attack came from like proving that I was enough to be in this beautiful play. And right. I think now how I've evolved and like you said, it's always a gift. So having that experience was the gift that's now led me to like, that would never happen again. Yeah. Because I know I'm enough. Like exactly. I've had to do the work exactly. to know I'm enough and go through things like that to be like, I want to find joy on stage. I don't yes, want to be having yes, a panic attack. Exactly. And there's no right or wrong in art, right? Like it's subjective anyway. Who cares mm-hmm. if the New York Times critic didn't like it? Like, right, because as long as you're doing what you love and, and it, you're giving yes. it your all and yeah. you're proud of it, that's the only thing you can do. <sighs> right. You know that now. Totally. And it takes, I mean, it takes a lot to learn that in yeah. all forms of art. So many. I mean, every and, time I write something, I'm like, I don't know if this is terrible or good. It's just, you have to pour your heart out. And you have a vulnerability coma after mm-hmm. like a hangover. Oh, yeah. Like oh, it's yeah. so hard, mm-hmm. especially with what you write. Like in Glennon, like you guys are- Oh my God. Your truth Depth is on your- soul. Like the podcast, this podcast I'm doing is the first time I feel like in the media, I've really, because I'm usually the girl who's like on the Ellen show twerking upside down or like singing oh, on yeah. James Corden. Yeah. I'm usually like, I hide behind the comedy. Oh, I have to watch those interviews. <laughs> my mom told me like, Oh, really? she, she knows all about you. She's like, she's so funny. <laughs> and even my dad, my dad really? knew. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. That's He's like, nice. oh, the blonde one from Two Broke Girls. <laughs> yeah, there's either the blonde or the brunette. Most right. people know, oh, that girl. Yes, but my dad, who's just like, I was like so excited that he was really excited That's that you were so, coming hi, on. Hi, dad. Yeah. Thank hi, you. Daddy. I know. Um, yeah, that, like, I felt like it was like those first few podcasts, and I'm sure you know this because you do podcasts full time, but it's like, in order to get your guests to sort of feel like it's a safe space and be open and vulnerable, you kind of have to go there yourself. I can't ask Glenn and Doyle these questions without setting the space that like I'm willing to go there too. For sure. And that was, that's been the hardest thing for me with like putting the baby of the podcast that's been so insular, like that I love so much because I'm geeking out asking these musicians and people questions that I want to know. But like then being like so open about my anxiety on that has been like freeing, but also like a vulnerability hangover. Like I'm scared of people to listen. I know. know? It is terrifying, but it's so cathartic. Yes. And I think for you, you'd say too, that like when people tell you that it's helped them, like actually an actress who's a guest star on our show this week was like, thank you. I've suffered from depression, anxiety, and I like would have had no idea. And it's so nice to be like a person yes. people go to. People feel safe telling yes. you. Yes. Yeah. I, oh, you especially. I feel like people probably come and tell you their life. Yes, their life and story. And I love it. And it's I've awesome. been that way even before I had a podcast or a blog. People, it, it yeah. goes back to human design. I'm a reflector. Oh, reflector. People sense that. And so they see me as a mirror and they'll speak to me about like the deepest yeah. things. So all my best friends from That's childhood so and college, we have a joke that like, if we're at a party, everyone will be like partying, having a good time. I'll be in the corner in the <laughs> deepest conversation with the same person the entire night. That's awesome. No matter what, like usually it's good. Sometimes it's not good because right. like, I actually don't know how to get away. Um, <laughs> But I've become better at that because you learn through this whole journey of waking up how to say no to the things that, but usually I love it. I'm like, please tell me more. Tell me everything. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, you really, I mean, yeah, just for, even for me, I've loved listening to you over the years and how like healing you are for, for all of us who are going through all sorts of health anxiety, anything. So, <laughs> so thanks, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. I want to ask you the rapid fires that I asked Ooh, everyone. Who yay. Comes on. Okay. So what is your, do you know, your sun rising and moon signs? I know I'm a Capricorn. Mm-hmm. Lacey asked me this too. And I actually am so bummed that I don't know my risings or my- We'll have to look it up okay. later and we can, I can put it in the intro or something. Okay. <laughs> um, where did all my rapid fires go? That's weird. <laughs> I mean, I pretty much know them anyway, but I also like to look at them. What is your human design? Generator. Your generator. Love. Of course you are. But my problem is the same, the problem all generators have where you're supposed to sit back and sort of wait for things to come. And because of my anxiety, I'm usually fighting against what my human design is and like burning out. Right. Which is a bummer, but I'm trying to be more like wait, sit back. 
Yeah, yeah. I was just telling a generator this yesterday. Like, you guys really have to take care of yourselves because you are the type that will and can do everything for everyone. And, then and so then you can't really have any time left for yourself. My husband's a generator and oh. he does everything for me. I'm a reflector and it's like, <laughs> I need you to do this. And he does. But eventually, like if you guys don't have those boundaries in place, yeah. resentment comes up, exhaustion, yeah. All of burnout. the things. Because mm-hmm. yep. you can handle a lot. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you don't deserve rest and that you don't deserve like downtime. And the light of a generator, like what we're supposed, what our purpose is goes away when yeah. we're burnt out. Yeah, you so gotta the, be we lit can't up even serve because our purpose. Exactly. We <laughs> light us up as yeah. non-energy beings. We need that. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Totally. I wonder what my husband is. He you might got, be a reflector. You gotta look him up. I've Do you know it? Up. Yeah. He's I mean, August 30th, 77, but I don't know his birth time. So I have to okay, look Okay. You'll up. have to look it up and tell okay, me. I'll call his mom. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm always doing. <laughs> um, who are some of your inspirations? So many. You, Lacey, who I love as well. Both of you have been really instrumental for me in my like sort of mental health journey and spiritual journeys. Carol Burnett, as far as comedy, Mm -hmm. Carol Burnett, Amy Poehler, big for me. Love her. Oh my gosh. Maya Rudolph. Like I love women in comedy. I think they're awesome. I, you know, I really love, there's Senator Gillibrand in, um, Senate. Uh, she's just been so amazing with like um, fighting for survivors of sexual assault. And I just love that everything she does and is fighting for. Yeah. I don't know. Those are very good answers. No, I love that. I love that. That's the first time that I've ever had like women in comedy as an answer. And obviously that's because of your life. life, Yeah. I think that's so cool. It's so interesting. Yeah. Nobody said, did anybody say actors or not Um, usually? Not usually, but yeah, yeah who are some actors that inspire you? I mean, those women, um, God, I love Olivia Coleman, who won the Oscar for The Favorite. I don't know if you guys, I know she's her. British. She was on Broadchurch as I'm well. I'm sure I would recognize She's her. amazing. Um, I just watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. Have you oh, binged that um, yet? My husband was watching it last night, oh, but I haven't seen it. And Anya, her name's Anya Taylor Johnson, or I think, or something like that. Sorry if I messed up the name, but she's such an incredible actress. And that show I thought was so beautiful. So, so cool. Everybody should check that one out. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Um, coffee or tea? Tea, green tea from Peak Tea. Do you know them? They uh, have yeah. like the crystals. They, yeah. they sponsor this oh, they show. Do? We love you, Peak Tea. <gasps> okay, yeah. well, this is not an ad for me. Yes. I genuinely I love drink the crystals because of, oh, you don't want to be using the Tox. bags all the and time, the right? And mm-hmm. What are your favorites? Like, because I do every morning, I do Earl Grey. I have, hope the medical medium doesn't get mad that I have this much caffeine. Okay, it's better than coffee. Okay, though, he would say. I do, I do Earl coffee. Grey of theirs with like homemade almond milk if I can get myself mm-hmm. to make it. Yeah. And then I I love their fermented pure green tea and then their jasmine green. And I, I usually have too. a cup of each. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's so good. That's healthy for you. There's antioxidants in the green tea. Oh my tea. gosh, and it's non-toxic. Yeah. And I feel like green tea also really helped my energy levels. Yeah. I don't know if that- and well, it's it cleaner energy than coffee, which causes those adrenal crashes yes. and stuff. I like the mint tea. Oh, I um, love the peak. mint herbal. I also There's a love, turmeric one that's really good. Yeah, I love the- um, Ginger, it's like a ginger and lemon or something. Oh, I haven't tried that one. I you might be a little. That. There's there's one other thing in it. I'll show you after. But okay. I love all of them. I know they're, so they're amazing. Mm-hmm. I've tried to get my mom on them too because I want her to like not have toxins and yeah meat with the crystals. Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean that's the thing so with good. those tea bags. I never liked green use. tea too before then. Yeah, I wasn't like a big green tea. Tastes too. way it's so better. good. So <laughs> good. They used to live in Brentwood too. Really, actually, the people who started it. Yeah, oh, I don't know if they still do, but they lived like right down the street from me. Nice. Small world. Small world. Um, do you have a favorite crystal? Do you use crystals? Yes. Oh, citrine. Oh, beautiful. I love that. Yeah. If you were a color, what color best represents your energy? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I know. It's do you hard. see, or you, can you see the aura thing? Yeah, I can see can people's you see auras. see me? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're very yellow. That's what I yellow. noticed immediately, which is like, Obviously, because you're you're in comedy. It's cheery. It's bright. Oh, it's cheerful. Interesting. It's it's so welcoming and warm. Okay. Um, yellow is. Wait, let me look it up because I need to say this right. But which chakra that it corresponds to? Um, oh, yeah. Which one is yellow? Yellow chakra. Oh, is the same? Sol- is oh, the solar, solar plexus, plexus situated? Be- 
below the ribs. Yellow energy is related to the ability to perceive and understand. It connects us to our mental self. That's like kind Whoa. of a lot of what you do. That's so so interesting. you're very, I mean, I saw yellow in you immediately. I also saw white in you, which is like the color of the universe. It's Ooh. Kundalini energy. It's like, <sighs> I love very this. I love the aura stuff. I wish I could see. I can't see shit. Yeah, I, I see. I see. I see so much. I see people's faces shape shift. I saw that in you right away. Well, you're very cosmic. Did you know that? What's that? Like, what you're very. Do you know about Pleiadians or anything? No, so you'll show. have to. You'll have to help me because oh, I don't I'll tell know. you everything. So okay. I knew before you even got here that you were Pleiadian because it's like an energy thing, and so I can see it in you online, and <gasps> it's beautiful. So this card deck right here, it's like. A star Ooh. seed tarot. Um, we can pull from it after this or, or during. <gasps> cool. Um, and that's all about the star seeds. It's basically just like I don't know about cosmic. this. This is something you've you've stumped me. Like I don't know about this one. <laughs> yeah, it's like connected to the star system. Oh, cool. Lacey's very cosmic. I'm okay. very cosmic. We always, I always joke like I don't feel like I'm human. Like I'm not from here. Interesting. I am human, but like our soul is mm-hmm. in a lot of different places. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. And of course, because you're so talented and inspiring. That's and so nice. But it's true. The creativity, people who are like deeply creative and yeah. sharing that with the world are typically, their soul is just in a lot of places and is old, old soul. Old soul. Do you feel I definitely that way? feel old soul. Mm-hmm. Yes, for sure. And like some of the health issues in terms of anxiety and other yeah. things, like it's, it's all, it's all previous. interconnected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you can work through it and that's what you're here to do. Yeah. Oh, Jordan, be my therapist too. <laughs> I love, I love it. I could go on about all that stuff forever. So what's on the horizon for you? We're in season three, so just trying to not get shut down from COVID-19 and keep shooting would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, keep We're doing season, season one is out of harmonics, uh, the podcast, but doing season two beginning in the next few weeks recording, but it won't be out probably till January. Cool. But it's fun. I'm a big music fan, so to have some of my music heroes on too has been cool. And then also people like Glennon Doyle that's yes. been incredible to talk to as well. Uh, and we have some cool sort of, like Lacey, I think is going to be on in the new season. And some we're, we're sort of, we're still going to be music based, but then also have a lot of wellness, spiritual uh, people come on as well. That's really cool. cool. Yeah. And then just uh, trying to rest and enjoy the yes, forest and yes, nature exactly. and ground during these uncertain times. Exactly. Embrace uncertainty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Embracing it all. Yeah. That's what it's all about right totally. now. Yep. Yay. Well, where can everyone Yay. find you? Um, at Beth Ferris on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have like the website, but you can find me Monday yeah. nights at eight on CBS. Well, that's November really cool. 16th. That's really cool. Actually, our first episode is a cool one to tune into. Into It's actually not necessarily funny, but we our show is about a white family who moves into a predominantly black neighborhood in LA. And our first episode is addressing Black Lives Matter. So it's a pretty cool and really emotional episode that we're proud of. So it's a good one to tune into if you're looking for something. And then the weeks after get a lot more funny, but (laughs) everybody should watch. Everybody should watch. So you were saying, no, I mean, I know that we're about to like close out, but I'm curious about this, that you don't really watch yourself on TV. I don't. Um, I tried to during Two Broke Girls in the beginning because it was so exciting to Mm -hmm. like be on TV for real. Uh, But I just, you know what it is? It's the flow state thing again. When I do something in comedy, it's so instinctual and in that state. And so to watch it back and like judge it for me, it was just, I didn't think that that was like sort of healthy for the art form that I, like my favorite parts of comedy. And, And there are a lot of actors who can watch themselves and learn. And I'm envious of that. But for me, it feels so instinctual that to then go back and sort of analyze how I set up a joke I don't know. It's like music to me at this point. And so if I'm in the rhythm of the music when I'm doing it and flowing, I feel great. And then to watch it back and try to like, I get in my head and and then I feel like I don't want then the next time I show up on set to be in my head, if right. that makes sense. But oh, there are a lot a of actors of who learn from themselves, mm-hmm. which is my husband can watch and learn. And I think that's amazing too. But um, I think you're one or the other. People like just never watch or right. watch everything, that I makes think. Sense. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> totally. So your husband 
He's he, an actor as well. Mm-hmm, that's yeah. so cool. He was on Mad Men for years and um, he just did Penny Dreadful City of Angels. But unfortunately, it's not going to get another season. But if people are interested, it's a really cool, supernatural, um, cool show. I love that Showtime. kind of stuff. Yeah, it's fun. It's very cool. That's amazing. Well, it's fun and also super dark. So like depending on yeah. what your mental well, health I state like is. Dark. <laughs> yeah. I like dark. Me too, actually. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And you guys met. A long we time met ago. a long time ago. We met um, because my friend from UCLA was a costume PA on Mad Men season one. Oh, that's so cool. So like I met him years, three years before we even started dating. So it's been almost 13 or 14 years that I've known him now, but we've only been like dating or dating. We're married, but 10 and a half years now. That's a long time. In a relationship. That's it incredible. Is. I know. I can't believe it. It went by fast. Yeah. And I love that he fly. knew me when I was a nanny and yeah. like not on Two Broke Girls, which is kind of cool too. Yeah. But like he all loved me before all, the, all of the, the success. <laughs> it's true love. Yeah. 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 That's so beautiful. He's a very old soul spiritual being, even though he pretends that he's just not. I know. <laughs> Don't they all? They my do. husband has no choice anymore. He used he, to pretend so hard. Too. And He's now like, I'm like, I think no, you get it all. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. oh, you're totally, I'm, I've, you've joined the dark side, baby cakes. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. He's so used to it. I'm like, did you yeah. know that there's a ghost in here? Because like there is. And do you see it? Because if you don't, like you're lying. And he's I'm like, no, there is. I'm actually genuinely glad I don't have that ability. I think I would be very scared. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm not scared. You're not scared. Because I, well, I, I have been scared of it at times, but I'm not scared anymore because I can feel the good energy or not. And I don't invite anything into this home that's not good. Yeah. So, um, that's cool. I mean, okay. energies can still get in, but then you ask them to leave and they listen because Kindly. they have to. You just mm-hmm. say, oh, just um, <laughs> only spirits of the highest and greatest good are allowed in this home, in this space. And then I'll go like on this entire block in this entire neighborhood because I just want She's them clear out. out. Um, and that is one thing we were just talking about that. My co-star and I, Tashina Arnold, were like, she was talking about some place in Vegas where you can like go and there's like crazy ghost like spirit oh, cool. energy, but I don't know what it is. But I was like, I would never. This like terrifies me. Right. Some people hate it. Some people, Some people always so, loved it. But like, I mean, I didn't know that I had that ability until, I don't know, three or four years ago. And then it's just escalated. Whoa. But yeah, there's been a ghost around around here because huh? he, but he's really don't nice. Don't come in now with he's me. Really Wait nice. till I leave. Yeah. <laughs> he, and Hudson can see him. So I always look Hudson. at Hudson because, you know, animals are so oh, intuitive. Everything. So I always look at him to confirm if something's happening. And like, it was so strong a couple of days ago. Hudson was like, up was and up going like it. this. And I was looking at him and then he started meowing at it. And then I'm like, okay, he's nice. This man, he lived in our building and like, we literally know him. And so of course he's here. Whoa. Too much, probably too much no, information. I'm just but like, he oh my passed God. away like at the beginning oh. of the quarantine and his, he's around. He's around. Hi. I know. John. Hi, John. Yeah. <laughs> but people don't go anywhere. Spirits, I mean, they pass on and That's, like the spirit yeah. is still here. The spirit's it's a whole other around. combo. But I it's know. True. That's refreshing to me though. Mm-hmm. I like hearing that because I feel like, especially thinking like about having a baby in the future, my husband and I keep having like really deep conversations about what exactly, like on the most basic level, do we want to start teaching them from the time that they're yeah, little? Yeah, I like, love that. I Love never dies is sort of like what I want to, and nature. Our things are like, how can we combine spirit, love never dies in nature in a way that like a young child could yeah. grasp? Because we both grew up pretty organized religion and I think that works for a lot of people. It's not really the path that's worked for me, spiritual spirituality wise. So like, Mm -hmm. I really have been thinking a lot about like what I want to teach them. I know. know. It's a really cool thing to think about. Yeah. And they know those things instinctually. I know. Kids, Kids. babies, they remember their past lives a lot of the times. And they're just like, in this world, I feel like I want to give them like something of hope, like some feeling of like, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. (laughs) Some security. Like mother nature just trust in the mother earth. That's yeah. like, well, well, that's a beautiful dies. thing Fear you can teach. Dies. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. This Yay. is awesome. I know we could talk for days. For days. I know. I'm, I'm so, so happy, happy to do this with you. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, my love. You're Yay. so amazing and so inspiring. And same to it you, is girlfriend. So, such an honor to have you here. Feel the same way. Feel honored to be on it. You have to come be on harmonics. 
Please. I would be so honored. Oh my gosh. I'm sure you're a fantastic interviewer. I can only imagine. I don't know. I got to learn from the best, which is you. So we'll see. We'll do it. We'll do it. It'll be so fun. (laughs) Okay, good. Yay. Thanks, love. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode with Beth. I was so happy to touch on all these incredible subjects from what it's like being in Hollywood and being a successful actress in this day and age to living with anxiety, to equine therapy, to being plant-based and beyond. I just love learning from Beth and talking about manifestation too in such a unique way. I think she's so incredible. She's so interesting. And I'm so happy to have her now in my life as a new soul sister and a dear friend. And she's just amazing. So go find her on Instagram. Tell her that you found her from TBB. And I'm sure she'll love to hear from you. Tag us on Instagram. If you're listening to this episode, we love to hear all about it. I love to repost you. And thank you so much to our sponsors for today's episode. Drink Olipop, the amazing soda alternative that is so healthy and low sugar. You can use the code BLONDE for a discount. And thank you to Function of Beauty, the hair care that's literally the only hair care that I'm using right now. It's customizable. It's adorable. It smells delicious. It's cruelty-free and vegan. And that is functionofbeauty.com slash blonde for a huge discount. And I hope that you guys will love. So if you feel inspired to rate and review the show on iTunes, head over there and leave a review, a rating screenshot to send it to me, jordan at thebalancebond.com. And I will thank you by sending you a free gift. And happy holidays, everybody. I hope everyone who celebrates Thanksgiving is having a good week with family. And I love you all. Thank you for being part of the Soul on Fire fam. I love you so much. And we'll talk soon. Sending you huge love. Mwah.